welcome to Paint With Heart. This is Cindy Harrison, your host, artist of Paint With Heart and the Paint With Heart Studios. And we are gonna have fun today. Um, it's our Halloween edition, but we're going from Halloween into autumn, just generic autumn with this adorable little guy. I call, if I only had a brain. And I think sometimes we can all relate to that. But before we get going on that, let me introduce you to my bestie from LA. Here she is, Ms. Meliz. Hi, everybody. I'm Melissa Reyes. I am in Los Angeles, and it is warm and sunny here. <laughs> but I'm really glad to be here with you to make um, your day a little warm and sunnier. And our day, our word for today is positive. And I think Cindy was inspired by these warm, sunny flowers on this card. And it says, positive energy shines through everything you do. So yes, I am a little devil today because we have Halloween theme kind of we woven through this, but um, we're just gonna use that energy for good. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That is fantastic. So we're going to start off. Um, this particular board I picked up at like a Michaels or an AC Moore. And it ha it's already stained. It's an already stained board. So I didn't have to do anything to it. Now, if you wanted to, you could seal it first and sand it because it is rough. It's just raw wood that's been stained. But I didn't. I just went ahead and painted right on it because I liked that rough barn board kind of look. And I started with that. However, on this, this is a canvas, obviously white. So how can I get that to look like a barn board? I started with the mink tan and then I added scratches and a, a comb, a filbert comb brush of honey brown because it had a golden value to it and asphaltum the darker now although these colors aren't on my scarecrow I could put them there but I just wanted to create that backboard and I put in ridges with a round brush of the asphaltum and I think it looks pretty pretty cool I'm pretty happy with it now we have a stencil that I want to add. So I start to take it off. If you do it straight like this, it, it's not pleasing to the eye because it then your eye's gonna focus on that. You don't want to do that. So off-center it a little bit, and you can start with your antique gold and then move on to your moon yellow and your stencil brush or a dome round. And I'm gonna just put some out on my palette go to a dry piece of paper towel and wipe most of it off and then start to put it on there. Now, if it doesn't come off, you're not seeing it as much as you want, then you go and take the moon yellow and do the same with that. And then you can have both these colors over your piece. Obviously, the bigger the brush, the faster this will go. You don't want it too bright because you don't want your eye to be drawn to it over top of um, instead of the scarecrow. Start with light pressure, work your way up, and you can use whatever. I would use a stencil that reminds you of a flower. And this, by the way, is Ms. Meliz. This is her mandala. It's number three on, in the marketplace on my website. And she has five other, she has four other stencils besides this one in the marketplace on my website. And, and actually, Ophelia used one for the background to the spider piece we did two weeks ago, and it was phenomenal. So I'm only gonna do one stencil, but I would stay with the antique gold 
look for the one up here. And then when you come closer to his face, you can do, go brighter as I did on this one. So I have the antique gold here and here. Then I went with the brighter moon yellow there. So it's near his eyes. And it kind of reminded me of sunflowers. So that's pretty cool. So now we're going to move on and let's do the hat. Take out. The hat was done, was base coated with country blue. And now we're gonna take out some deep midnight blue. I'm gonna use my three quarter inch wash brush. And let's go ahead and do a little bit of going pre to pre-wet the area at the brim, on the brim of the hat here, down the left side and across the bottom. And then without doing anything else to my brush, I'm gonna go to right, well, I'm gonna go right into a corner of the um, deep midnight blue. And I'll tap it on both sides just to see how much paint I have on there. And then I'm gonna go down the left side and bring it across the bottom of the brim. So I start away from the line and go toward the line. And then as I come over here, I'm going to bring it up. I might need some more paint. Bring it up around his face. You can just tickle that surface smoothly if you want there. Knock that out. Next, I'm gonna take my brush with some water in it and go across on top of the brim. So I'm at the bowl of the hat, the base of the bowl of the hat. And if you wanna just do the whole hat, you can. It'll probably dry out by the time you get to the next layer, but pick up on the corner of your brush and start at the bottom. This is on the bowl of the hat, but it's above the brim. To make those little creases in his hat, I'm going to keep the paint on the bottom, water on the top, and start wherever you want to put a crease and you can start kind of thick. And then I'm twisting my brush and wiggling it to make it thin. So the water part is leading my brush away. The water part's leading my brush away toward the center. You can start off thick here and then kind of twist your, your brush so that it's on a chisel and lead it away. I'm going to do the same on the opposite side. My brush is going to be flat and then as I come away I chisel it away. So it gives that wrinkled look. And one more time. If any of you have a chance to go check out um, Ms. Mola's uh, on Bubbler. Yeah, or on either of our pages, I'm sure it'll show up. Yeah, I shared it on my page too, I believe. And uh, she had a Halloween episode last night, uh, her fourth, 
Fourth annual Halloween, yeah. And uh, her guest was Joe Mo, who is in Hollywood and has gotten awards for his work on horror movies, right? And yeah, with Forrest J. Ackerman. He used to be he was Forrest J. Ackerman's caretaker, and so that's what the one thing he's gotten awards for. Who was anyway? Long story short, Cindy wore a really cute costume. You'll never guess what she was. Not yeah. scary, but it's in the Swatty. I thought it was scary. Swatty <laughs> Potty commercial. <laughs> I thought it was very scary. She was dressed as a unicorn with rainbows. <laughs> <laughs> And I and I said to my family, I should go buy a squatty potty and carry it around with me. <laughs> it's really cute. She and had then, rainbow hair. Yeah, I got my rainbow <laughs> hair. It was fun. Oh, he's gonna be handsome. Oh my gosh, so cute. She already started the shading on the scarf. Ha <laughs> ha. Mm -hmm. Yep. She's ahead of Lovely. you. Okay. Um gonna do the highlight well we have to dry that and we'll do the highlight so to do the highlight I'm gonna pre-wet up here first and work my way down because I'm gonna do the opposite side of the brush on when we did the shading we put the dark on the bottom and the water on the top now we're gonna have the paint on the top and the water on the bottom so we start down. Take a little bit of the um, country blue and mix it with your white or I'm going to mix it with my buttermilk that's out. But you can do it with white or your light buttermilk. Water down, paint up. I can put some across the top. Uh, my hat shows on the top because I picked a bigger canvas. So I can kind of brush that across there. If you're going to, um, I forgot to pre-wet, so let's pre-wet. Make sure your first color on there is dry. This one here, I'm going to start on the chisel and then flatten it out to the end. So, or you on this side, because I'm not turning my thing around, I can start there and then flatten it out, but the paint is up. Start there, flatten it out, and then chisel. Paint is up. You know, there's always one way you can do it easier than the other. Flatten it out and chisel it. Now with the pre-wet of my brush, I'm gonna do the top, top of the brim. So over here, I want the water tip of my brush to be in the corner where the dark is. I don't want to go across the whole thing. I want the water end to be here. Start on a chisel against the line and then flatten it out when you get up to the top. You can walk it down a little bit and then walk it right over. Need to add more. Add some more and bring it right over. It's quite wide. I'd like to move on to his little pieces of overall here, the jean overall denim. And I want to make it look denim -y. So I'm taking my quarter inch filbert comb and I'm going to go into the deep midnight blue and splay out my hairs. And then I'm going to apply the paint 
in a horizontal and vertical fashion. So you can start bringing it down and see on the canvas, it, the canvas already has its own grain. So this doesn't show up as much as it would if you were on a smoother surface and I'll show you here. So see how that, you can see those lines. They definitely, they show up better on a smoother surface. Do it with, with what you can on that. And if you have to use just a liner brush, go ahead and use just a liner brush. You can add some highlights with that either Snow White or Light Buttermilk plus Country Blue and add a few of those lines in some areas that you feel would get a little bit more sunlight than the other areas. And that takes care of that for now. I'm going to go back up to this and place the the only line you really need to put on there would be the circle for the center of the flower if you have a number eight round or we're going to do three layers of petals the first is light cinnamon, the second is antique gold, and the third will be moon yellow. So light cinnamon, I flatten my brush out so it, it gets flat when I'm loading it. And then I'm gonna start from just inside my circle, wiggle, 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 pull and twist. Wiggle, 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 pull and twist. So I'm applying pressure when I wiggle. Wiggle, 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 pull and twist. And they don't have to be perfect. Inside the line, wiggle, 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 pull and twist. All the way around. And I can show you this way if it helps. When I put the pressure, see how much flat, how flat I'm getting the brush? Wiggle, 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 pull and twist. And wash your brush out. I'm going to just quickly hit that with a blow dryer. I start down flat wiggle 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 but when i come and pull and twist up i lift up so the hairs come underneath the brush okay so the next color we're going to do is antique gold and load your brush same manner this time i'm going to offset it just a little i'm not going up the center so much but just a little to one side or the other wiggle 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 flatten it out and see, I don't lift and pull, that's what happens. Oops, wrong color. Blow my brush, wiggle, 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 lift and pull. Now, repeat with the moon yellow. While that's drying, I'm going to take my number 12 flat and 
pre-wet uh, his jeans under his um, scarf. Pick up on the corner of my brush the deep midnight blue and place that along that edge. Paint up, water down. So I can put a shade on his jeans. Liner brush or um, I have a three round, I'm gonna use my liner brush. This is a 10 aught. And I'm gonna pick up some of the light cinnamon color. Have a little moisture in it so it, it makes it a little ink, inky. And I'm going to straight at a 90 degree angle to my surface start pulling some lines out from the center. And let me see if I can put that closer to the camera. And then we can... So I'm pulling lines out from the center. Pretend that you have a dot in the middle and you're pulling the lines away from the center. So we're going to do that on all the petals. Now we're going to get to do the center. If you have a deer foot brush, if you don't, you can try to use your dry brush. But if you have a deer foot brush, I would suggest uh, number four, which is like a quarter inch. And I'm going to first pick up some of that light cinnamon and pounce it, pounce it all around the center and go right over the yellow. That's why you need those lines to be really long. Next, we're gonna, on the dirty brush, on the, just on the toe, so the longest hairs, I'm just gonna pick up some of that um, light buttermilk and pounce it, and then put it around. Um, if you put the dark part of your brush in the center, this is gonna go around and touch a little bit that and that's the perfect size is the quarter a little bit around that area if you want to do the toe and just hit the toe to the surface instead of the flat you can do that too The next color we're going to pick up is actually going to be lamp black. Pick that up on just, I'm just going to scooch the toe into the brush, but it's not loaded, it's just on the tippy toe of the brush. And I'm going to put that in the center right under what we just did with the light buttermilk. I'm adding a little bit of the light cinnamon over the black too. Now you can do this now or you can do this later because we all know that when we start working with dots, the dots travel on us because we end up getting our hand in it. But what I would do is go ahead and add the black, uh, I put the black dots in around the center area and I started to put moon yellow in the center and around the edge. 
I also put the light cinnamon in the center and I put light cinnamon around the edge as well. It looks like I put some burnt umber there, even though it's nowhere else on my palette. Um, it's on his face. So you can choose to put the black out there or leave the black just in the center. I'm going to go down to the scar and that was like buttermilk and I'm going to pick up some um, deep midnight blue which is already out and with my big three quarter inch wash brush I'm going to pre-wet go get clean water if you need to And this, I'm going to start with the paint on the corner of my brush that's at the top. So the paint's at the top and the water's at the bottom. I'm going to go under his chin first. And then I'm going to do these creases just like we did the hat. The paint is going to be up though. That gives you some folds in your, dry that. So I did this first because I want you to see where your creases are. And this will help you because when you go to do the plaid on there, you want to stop, pick up and start again and have it be a little bit off. You don't want a straight line all the way down because then it won't look natural. So pick up some country red. And I'm going to move down to my number eight flat brush. I'm picking up the red with a lot of water in my brush. See how watery this is. And then tap it out on my paper towel. And when I start doing this, I want to stop where I picked up the um, dark color and shift it just a slight hair and then shift it again. So each one is a little off from the other. So we have to dry that before we can go in the other direction. So we want to cross over this one. So I'm going to go So dry that. It never comes out the same way twice. The first one I have my crisscrosses closer together. So you can have them closer together if you want. And I scooped them more. And when that's dry, you're going to go back and reinforce 
the And then when that's dry, we will put on a highlight. And for that, we want a dry, um, a dry, dry brush. I wanted to share you with, I wanted to share with you an idea I had um, for the center of the flower. It was to use a button. I have some really big buttons that I thought would be cool in the center. I mean, this guy is kind of too big and he's not the right color, but look at these ones. I thought, oh my gosh, that, that would be so cool to just glue a big button in the middle. So again, just for- That would be really cute, Cindy. Yeah, I know, just for giggles, you know, that uh, you can have, you can do so many different things. Oh, that's cute. Isn't that a neat button? Yeah. Mine's drying. It makes me smile. Oh, you're like, oh, that's poor Melissa needs so much work. That's <laughs> I say it all it makes me smile it's pretty and look at the crinkles in the top of your hat oh that came out good and but um flowers like blooming beautifully in your scarf more water on the red but yeah terry terry looks ready to show us something she does she's smiling it's so nice to see terry's smiling face i know and cynthia's too and, and always a pleasure to see ophelia's it is so it's so cheery I don't know if it's just me, but I think it's a very cherry. Good. I love it. Ophelia. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Now we're gonna, when we put the highlight on, it's gonna pop for sure, for sure. Okay, Cynthia, spotlight's on you. Oh, there you go. Awesome. So we're ready now, right? Moving on. Okay. Now I'm going to take this brush and I'm going to take out the snow white this time. I do want snow white. I don't want light buttermilk because our base is light buttermilk. So I want this to really show up. So I'm going to take the white on my dry brush, twirl it around, work it so it's in the hairs, but then take a dry paper towel. wipe that most of it off and now I'm going to scrub it on my um, handkerchief here my kerchief but I want to do it between where the blue is between where the blue it's always going to go between in the center between the blue areas so I start first here then I'm going to make it like a V and go from the center here and start to go between these two blue areas in the middle. Bring that up. You see how that's taking form? So it's swig swag. This one here, because I put my two blues close together, I can't have a lot of in there, but I'm gonna go down here. And then tuck some down here. And very little there. If you want more white, just go ahead and scrub some more in. Last but not least, what I did on this is I went with the um, deep midnight blue around the outer edge here. And you can use your three quarter inch or you can use your 12 flat, whatever, whichever one you wanna use. But I'm going to just take some of that color and just 
come around the edge a little bit on both sides. If you have, um, if you haven't washed out your brush yet and it's still dry, just wipe the excess paint off onto your paper towel or you can wipe it off onto a wet wipe. And then I want you to pick up some heritage brick. And I'm going to work that into my brush. Again, wipe the excess off on a paper towel. And right where he has the smile lines, right above that, I'm gonna start scratching in this color. And that's gonna be his cheeks. Start with a small circle and work your way out to the edge with less pressure. Then you can wash your brush off. If you're ready for the next step, you're gonna take the white and you're gonna base coat his eyes. I do that with my eight round and Snow White. If you have a filbert, you can use your filbert. Just do one coat for now. I'm gonna dry that. His nose is also done with heritage brick. And you can use the um, number eight flat to put that in. Dry that. We're gonna shade under the hat. Oh, okay. And we're gonna shade under the eyes. So as long as you can see your outline for your eyes and we're mm -hmm. gonna shade around the nose and under his chin. Okay. That's all going to be done with burnt umber. So you can pre-wet if you want to make sure it stays, the water stays on the face. But if you um, want to just go to your side load, you'll want it fairly wide. Paint up, water down, burnt umber. We're going across right underneath his hat. Right underneath his hat his hat, her hat, whatever. You can go over the um, sunflower petals if they go over that and then go back with a clean brush and wipe it off. Wipe off the uh, petals. You can mop that out. I'm going to size down to my number 12 flat and I'm going to go around the eyes. I'm doing the left side from say like 10 o'clock to four o'clock. Pre-wet the left side and the bottom of the nose. Back to my three quarter inch wash brush, clean water. I'm gonna do above the scarf. And now go back and paint. If you hadn't done already, paint your eyes and you can put two coats of white on that. On his eyes, I wanna shade the top part of the eyes, what we call a C stroke. And I'm going to do it like we did, I just said, with the um, 
the parallel, uh, par um, let us say parallel, perpendicular, parallel, chisel, flat, chisel. We're going to do that up there. This is what it looks like when I'm doing it for practice. I have um, corner loaded with the corner of my brush loaded with paint here, but the water end on this side. I start flat. I do not twist the hairs of my brush. I just move my arm and I go to the left and then to the right. And it makes the letter C. To the left and then to the right. I do not move the direction of my brush, the, the hairs of my brush. I just move my whole arm, my whole hand, holding the brush. The brush is not twisting in my fingers. Does that make sense? So you can pre-wet those areas, or you can just start on the chisel against the outside edge. We're going over the hill, top of the eye, down the left side of the eye. We're gonna dry that and then put the black pupil in. And I'll do that with my eight round. Now, depending on where you put the pupils will depend, it will give him different looks. I wanted kind of like the thoughtful look, like he's thinking of something. If I only had a brain, pick up some black. I did not put it all the way to the outer edge. I left a little bit of the white showing on that outer edge. Looks like on his nose, I picked up a little bit, while those are drying, I picked up a little bit of the heritage brick on the corner of my brush and some light buttermilk maybe. Yeah. And then I kind of just brought it down from the upper peak and brought it across. Give it a little bit of a highlight, mop that out. When the black is dry, you can take your liner brush and some white and you can put a dot or a comma stroke. I put it in the upper left corner of the pupil. And then I took the same brush and some black with a little bit of moisture, make it a little loose. And I'm going to outline the outside of the eye. And I'm also going to outline his nose and also the lines on his mouth. You can do this with your um, number three round if you want to also. Make them a little thicker. I didn't do the dashes. Now let's do his hair. His hair was fun because I started with my number eight flat and the first color I used was light cinnamon. Kind of almost in a dry brush kind of manner. And I started by pulling, and I'm gonna do it upside down. I started by pulling lines of this color. So if I'm over here, I'll do a long line and I'll pull up. And then I'll do a shorter line on a different angle and pull up towards that. And then I can even do change my angle again and go even shorter. So I have those stripes there. Let me make this one a little bit longer. And 
And then I'll do the same on this side. So we can start, and again, it can be different directions. I'm gonna start over his eye. I'll go straight that way. Next color I did was the antique gold. When I picked this up though and dragged it, I didn't want to drag it all the way up. I wanted to go about, um, could be two thirds of the way, could be, you know, depending on the length of the hair. So when you start, you tip it on the bottom, but you flick up. So it could be one third of the distance. Um, I'm going to put another color on top of this, so two thirds would be more favorable. And I am twisting it a little bit sometimes. So put it down, lift it off, put it down, lift it off. Too much paint though on that one. And you can even put one here in the middle with this lighter color. You can add ones. And then the last color on that one I did was the moon yellow. Make sure you get most of the moisture out of your brush. This time here I'm going less than what I did before. So if I did two, you know, I'll do like one third of the of the whole length of the hair. Uh, after we get the hair done, all we have to do is his um, shirt. He still could be touched up a little bit. Okay, so this is this is the picture. Look how sad he looks. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that that straight line is where the, right. the board is. Mm -hmm. So then I was looking at him compared to yours, who's adorable, with a happy smile, but then I added my smile. So you can barely see it, but it makes a big difference. Oh, yes. Now he's happy. Yeah, now he's got a happy little grin. I can go in and, and make him a little darker, but. Let's do the um, shirt and then he'll be done. Back out. And the shirt's done the same way as we did the handkerchief or his hat and with the ripples I made ripples in his um, attire. I'm going to use my three quarter inch uh, brush and I'm first going to put I'm gonna, let me try antique gold first and see what happens but I'm going to go against his scarf, handkerchief, and his um, jean overalls. And you can pre-wet or just do a side load. You want a soft gradation of color. If you go over an area, just wipe it off with the water into your brush. So I'm looking for a soft blending of color there. Mop out if necessary. While that's drying, I'm going to pick up on my dry brush some of the um, mink tan plus light buttermilk because I decided that he looks too dark and I want to give him a little bit of a highlight. So a little bit of that mink tan on my dry brush, wipe off the excess, pick up a little bit of the light buttermilk, scrub it into the same area, wipe off the excess, and then start to scrub it onto his face between his eyes and his and his nose and if you want under his nose on the top of his mouth 
um, not too heavy. It's not a lot of light buttermilk. It's just, I'll put some on the other side of this eye if there's space. just to give them a little bit of a shine in the middle. If you don't see it, you can add a little bit more light buttermilk, but don't get too crazy with it because I don't want it too white. Too much of a, I think that pressure is a little too much. If you get too much, you can go back over it with a wash of mink tan. Put a little bit of a shine. Make sure your shirt is dry. And now I'm gonna go and do the little ripples in his shirt and that'll be with the antique gold again i'm going to start fat and get thin so start fat and get thin and they're going to change you can have them change directions as far as but not according to what my line drawing was But yeah, kind of. Mm. However you want them to be ripply. Dry that. And for the highlight, it's going to be the moon yellow plus light buttermilk or just straight light buttermilk, depending on what shows up for you. So that I'm going to take and start from against the antique gold and wiggle that and trail it off. If you want to come across the top, you can, but I would end before you get to the next um, area of antique gold. So take that, slide your brush into that and wiggle, wiggle, wiggle and trail off. Start against that, wiggle, 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 and trail off. A little bit more like buttermilk in my brush. I think a little one down here. And we're just trailing off whatever's excess on my brush. I'm not going to, if I put any over here, very slight. Evaluate your piece when you're done. And I think that my brim could use a little lightening up. I think it's a little dark. So I might go in and pick up some of that white. And if you have a puddle of the blue heart, um, country blue still out, I'll mix that. And then bring that up to the flower. Like I did before, wipe off the flower petals so that they don't. And then I would come across and pick it up and bring it down the other side. Wipe off the flower petals as you need to. But that kind of lightens that up and I like that better. I want to recreate a barn board look on canvas. So I base coated my canvas with a medium uh, value um, brown, which in this case was the mink tan. And this is my credit card. 
and well, not a credit card. That's actually the card I used to get on and off the ship it <laughs> on my cruise. I used credit card. Okay. Right. But I'm going to pick up the color and then I'm going to scratch it across the surface. And if I wanted to get excess off, I just can. But I'm not sure. What do you think? Is this not doing it? Yeah, totally. It looks like a weathered barnyard barn look. So I think so. Scrape that on there and bring it across. I'm going to try and stay horizontal, but most of it ends up in. The other way to do it would be to put some paint down on your surface like so, and then bring that across. So now I'm going to take my paper towel and wipe the excess off. So what I'm going to do is take my big um, rake and pick up some of that color and just start streaking that across. Do that with a couple of colors. Right now, I'm doing it with the honey brown. <clears throat> okay. And then I'm going to do it with some darker brown. Ooh. I'm going to just put some more of that base coat color on here. Ooh, yeah, that's on your canvas, right? Yeah. It looks just like the board. Isn't that pretty cool? <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Cindy. This is a really fun project. I totally enjoyed this. It's so positive. I loved the best part for me was putting the smile on the face of my little scarecrow. Before we put that smile on, he looked kind of sad and it really made a difference. And that reminds me to always smile and um, stay positive. So thank you. <laughs> and, it, and thank everyone for coming today and for watching us on the replays. And remember to, well, not that much, but remember to stay positive, keep positive. If there's something that you want to achieve, 
or um, a place you want to visit, just a little bit of work and you'll get there, just like we did with the scarecrow. So mm -hmm. until next time, remember to always paint with heart. heart. <laughs> Thank you everyone and good night. <laughs>